distinguished guests and friends. My name is Bandit Janrochanakit from Faculty of Political Science, Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. Before I start my presentation, I would like to say that I am reading my paper on October 6, 2020, the day that 40 years ago there was a massacre at Thammasat University, where people were protesting to a return of a dictator. As people were gathering peacefully, the government condemned it that they had insulted the monarchy. The government deployed the paramilitants and broader patrol police troop, they stormed into Thammasat University and started firing at demonstrators. As a result, 41 had died, many of them injured and charged with criminal cases. We are now remembering those who fall on that day. My paper's title is Thailand's Uneasy Path to Democracy the rise of the youth and urgent calls. Democracy in Thailand has declined since September 19, 2006 coup d'etat. The 2006 junta ousted then Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra from Thai Rak Thai Party or TRT, who was extremely popular and who was largely supported by the lower middle class in the country's developing provinces. Thaksin's government created policies that benefited the poor and lower middle class. For example, the 30 Thai Baht Universal Health Care Scheme, the 1 million Thai Baht Fund per village, and the One Tambon One Product or OTOP program. These programs were condemned as populist policies, and it was suggested that they were designed for advanced vote buying by using taxpayers' money. Thaksin's government was condemned for being corrupt and for being a parliamentary dictator. In response to Thaksin's popularity and controversial policies, his opponent founded the People's Alliance for Democracy, or PAD, which is a pro monarchy and ultra loyalist group usually wearing yellow shirts by which they went on to become nicknamed as, and rally against him. As a result, the Council for National Security, or CNS, staged a coup d'etat on September 19, 2006, while Thaksin Chinawatra was awaiting to give his speech as Prime Minister of Thailand at the United Nations. He canceled his speech once he realized that he was no longer in power. Thaksin was charged with several cases of corruption and awaited trial. He finally fled the country for good after taking a trip to the opening ceremony of the Beijing Olympic Games. The Thai Rak Thai Party was dissolved after the Constitutional Court ruled that it was guilty of paying small parties to run against it in an election in April 2006 in order to satisfy a requirement for minimum participation. As a result, Thaksin and 110 other executives of the party were banned from participating in politics for five years. However, former Thai Rak Thai members joined the People's Power Party or PPP under the leadership of Samak Sundarawet. The PPP won, won 233 seats in December 23, 2007 general election. Samak became Prime Minister, but he faced a court verdict that he had violated the Constitution by accepting payments for, to appear on a cooking show on television why in office. That ended Smak's political life. Somchai Wongsawat, Thaksin's brother-in-law, succeeded Smak and became prime minister. 
The PAD did not let Som Chai take up office easily. They blocked the parliament and government headquarters, preventing him from entering his office. The Constitutional Court dissolved the PPP and its coalition on the grounds of election fraud. The former PPP members had to then organize a new political party, the Pue Thai Party. The court verdict paved the way for Abhisit Vecha Chiwa from the Democrat Party to become Prime Minister. The PPP supporters realized that their votes were stolen by a series of attacks from Thai elites, whose actions were meant to take down all of Thaksin's men. They felt an enormous amount of injustice. As a result, PPP's supporter found the United Front for Democracy against Dictatorship, DDD, or AKA, Wretches, and rallies on the streets, calling for a visit to step down as Prime Minister and call a new election. However, the Abhisit government deployed the army to crack down on the demonstrations on April 10 and from May 18 to May 21, 2010. As a result, more than 100 died and 2,000 were injured. The Abhisit government dissolved parliament in late 2010, setting a general election on July 2, 2011. Ying Lak Chinawatra Thaksin's younger sister led the Pue Thai party and won the election. She became the first female Prime Minister of Thailand. Ying Lak's government tried to propose a blanket amnesty bill in 2013, expecting that the draft bill would please all sides. On the contrary, it sparked anti-government movements. The anti thaksin and Ying Lak coalitions, the so-called People's Democratic Reform Commission, or PDRC, took the streets and blocked government offices for several months, calling for the army to intervene and to oust the Ying Lak government. Ying Lak stepped down on December 10, 2013, and called for a general election on February 2, 2014. Thus, the PDRC was not satisfied. They asked their supporters to block ballot stations in order to shut down the Thaksin regime. Even though more than half of Thailand's province, that is 59 of 77 provinces, succeed with 100% of their ballot station opening without any disruption, the Constitutional Court ruled that the general election was void. The interim government had no choice but to call for a new date. As a result, the National Council for Peace and Order, NCPO, comprised of army leaders, staged a coup on May 22, 2014. The junta's leader, General Prayut Chan Ocha, announced that that its first plan was to return to civilian government in 2015. However, the first draft of the constitution was aborted because it failed to satisfy the National Assembly. A new drafting committee was set up and led by Mishai Ruchupan, a well-known and experienced figure who has served various earlier hunters. In the meantime, the junta kept postponing the roadmap to return to democracy, even though they were under pressure from the international community. Finally, the junta took their draft constitution to a referendum on August 7, 2016. The draft was protested by pro-democracy wings, many of whom were later charged for violation of martial law. They even added whether the Senate could vote for the, C the Prime Minister to the referendum. Even though there were vote no campaigns to the draft, the constitution passed a referendum. In October 16, Thailand's King Bhumibol passed 
after a long time illness, and a national mourning ceremony were, was scheduled. All political activities were postponed, including the constitution promulgation. King Wajilarongkorn, however, requested to revise a chapter on the monarchy before signing the constitution. The revised constitution allowed the king to leave the country without first appointing a regent. Besides, the 2017 constitution took Thailand back to a quarter democratic regime in which 250 appointed senators could cast their votes for the prime minister. The Senate became a political party that could vote for the Prime Minister, which essentially meant it could literally steal the general election. The new constitution introduced a new proportional representative system to make sure that the Pure Thai Party would not win the election by limiting the possible maximum number of seats in Parliament. After the 2019 election, the Pure Thai Party won its maximum number of 136 seats, meaning it would still not have any proportional representative. Palang Pracharat Party or PLP, which is the Huntas Party, won 115. And the Future Forward Party, FFP, won 80. The opposition coalition support Future Forward Party leaders, Thanathorn Jingrung Rungit, in his bid to be Prime Minister. But Thanathorn was barred from performing his duty as a representative since he was charged with holding chairs in a media company, which was deemed unconstitutional. In July 2020, Prayut Chan Ocha became Prime Minister with support from the Palang Pacharat with votes from 250 senators. The former junta leader now emerged as Prime Minister with support from both Parliament and Senate. Panathon's case was not the final target, as the Future Forward Party became the next one. The Future Forward Party was charged with plotting to overturn the monarchy, and it was deemed that a loan of money from Thanathorn was unconstitutional. On February 21st, 2010, the Constitutional Court ruled that the loan violated campaign rules. The court also banned 16 senior party leaders from politics for 10 years. As a result, the dissolution of the Future Forward Party and banning leading members of future forward parties weakened the opposition coalition. The dissolution of future forward party triggered people's anger as they witnessed what they saw as a series of unjust legal measures towards a pro-democratic means. The Thai youth not only felt that their votes were stolen, but also prospective leaders. They felt that their future was taken by aristocratic and undemocratic ruling classes. On February 22, 2020, just a day after, Thai youth starts a flash mob. Similar events spread widely both in Bangkok and other provinces. The flash mobs ended shortly before the widespread of COVID-19 pandemic. But once COVID-19 situation improved, the youth came out again and started demonstration to call for the drafting of a new social contract, that is a new constitution by an elected body. The flash mobs were coordinated by two major coalitions, the United Front of Thammasat and Demonstration UFTD and the Free People Movement, FPM. The two movements shared their demands with help from pro-democracy wings, including former UDD members. The United Front of Thammasat and Demonstration emphasized its 10 demand 
to reform the monarchy, whereas the free people movement calls for the end to intimidation of critics of the government. The drafting of a new constitution by elected council, and lastly, the ending of the Senate and the dissolution of the House of Representatives. The group said it was also opposed to both coup attempts and the idea to have a loyally appointed in uh, national government to break the political impasse. Since the NCPO came to power in 2014, there have been many cases of human rights violations and related issues. The first one, unforced disappearance. After 2014 coup d'etat, many UDD members fled to neighboring countries and bought cassette via inter online programs. However, there are reports that two internet radio disc jockeys went missing in 2016 and 2017. Another three DJs went on missing in 2018. The most outstanding case was when the bodies of two famous DJs were found floating in Mekong River. The two men were known to have been accompanying Surachai Dan Watananuson, who had gone missing. In 2019, three anti government activists, Chu Chip Chivasut, Sayam Terut, and Prisana Thapthai, were reported to have been seen in Vietnam. The latest case is Wan Chalem Sat Saksit was abducted in broad daylight in Cambodia on June 4, 2020. Second, on charges against activists. Since 2014, anti-government activists have been charged with violation of martial law and NCPO orders. But since the March 24, 2019 election, the cyber-related act has been used to slap activists and opposition leaders. The government also imposes strict use of the Public Assembly Act. The government places charges against anti-government activists for illegal assembly. When the COVID-19 pandemic started, the government declared a state of emergency and applied the emergency decree on public administration to prevent public assembly and peaceful protests. As a result, UFTM and FPM leaders were charged with sedition according to Article 116 of criminal law. The accused activists were taken to criminal court and later released on bail. What's next? Under heavy restriction and measures, to stop the UFTM and FPM. The two movements keep pushing their agendas to draft a new constitution and call for reform of the monarchy. They have called it for the next demonstration to be held on October 14, 2020, both to commemorate the October 14, 1973 uprising and to call for the government to resign and respond to their demands. Thank you for listening.